Hi guys, this is Flo. Uh, so I have bought the SunFounder 10.1 inch IPS LCD monitor for the Raspberry Pi 4. Make it easy and fun. And then the, it comes with everything you need to mount your Raspberry Pi 4, including a, a slot for your um, camera, which I don't have a camera module, so I'll probably, I won't be using it. But um, but yeah, so it's, it's basically a kind of like a fun a little portable laptop if you're thinking about something like that for like a project or anything. Um, yeah, it's just a really nice package and everything. Uh, the instruction operation manual is pretty good. It has very colorful col um, instructions and pictures and everything. Um, so like I said, it comes with everything you'll need to run uh, Raspberry Pi 4, uh, including the power adapter, which uh, um, you can also um, supply power to the Raspberry Pi 4 using a USB-A to USB-C uh, cord that is provided with uh, this box. Um, yeah, so this is the, the cord. Now, like I said, you can uh, use a Raspberry Pi 3, 2, or 1 uh, using the mount in the back, but uh, you will have to uh, get um, different um, connectors to, to you know, f for your unit because, uh, like I said, this is really designed for the Raspberry Pi 4. In fact, actually, I think it's not really designed, but it's more of a, they might have, uh, like, a revision of their previous um, screen because I know they do make a 7-inch and they do make another 10-inch version of this uh same screen, but uh, maybe designed a little bit different on the back for mountain purposes and stuff like that. Uh, I don't love the way they mount it because the way they mount it, um, you block access to your SD card. Now, you can remove the SD card. They give you a little hook, uh, but uh, I there is no way you could use the hook to take out the SD card. It just looks like impossible to do. You may have to invest into a tweezers. <laughs> um, so uh, if you don't have tweezers, you have to go and buy one so you can uh, take in and put in different uh, SD card if you uh, plan on doing that. But uh, I think for my purposes, I just have one SD card in there. And the SD card actually runs Kodi, it runs RetroPie, and it runs the full desktop uh, GUI uh, Raspbian. So, so it's actually a pretty nice uh, setup that I have. And depending on my usage, I... I'll swap between the, the three different um, OS, so so it's kind of cool. Um, the actual monitor, like I said, uh, it feels a little cheap, especially because the feet, like it's made of some kind of plastic or some kind of acrylic plastic, and I feel like I can just br bend it and break it if if I really uh, feel like um, like it. Uh, but um, you know, it's like I said, it's kind of somewhat cheap and kind of it looks kind of bare bones actually but uh, you know it is what it is um, so yeah so the this, uh, you'll see there you got the VGA uh, port which I don't know why it's there but it apparently it is there you got HDMI and the power uh, connector and also that the USB a to just basically there to provide power to your Raspberry Pi uh, 4 now they didn't go with the that ribbon display method that is available on the the official touch uh, seven inch touch screen, which I think is actually a more elegant way of uh, pushing um, your your images to to the display. Uh, but uh, from what I understand it, if you use the the um, the ribbon method. Uh, you won't be able to use the HDMI out, so basically you're it's less versatile. Now, um, mounting your um, Raspberry Pi 4 is fairly easy. Um, you basically remove the uh, little four little um, screws the uh, tops, and you're just gonna layer the um, the mounts on uh, that's provided for you. Uh, so you you'll use blue first, then clear plastic, and then uh, eventually the green will uh, top it off. Um, and it's kind of like a very low pro profile case. Uh, that's really um, kind of there just to protect the uh, the device, but um, uh, but it leaves a lot of stuff exposed as well, which is fine for um, trying to keep the Raspberry Pi cool. They did provide three heat sink um, 
used for your, you know, your CPU, RAM, and uh, one other slot. Um, but it does get hot, and um, I don't know. Like, uh, I, I uh, am looking into um, getting a different case, basically. Same kind of low-profile case, but with um, an active fan uh, to blow... Um, you know, uh, air to keep it cool. Now, I do have another fan that I've used on a different uh, case that I, I did not love because um, it it sounds really loud. And I um, I am assuming they make different fans or quieter quieter fan or or maybe even fans that are um, uh, kind of like will will only turn on at a certain temperature, which is uh, actually what I love about the um, uh, this other case I have, the Argon 1 case, that uh, will only turn on the fan if it gets hot, which is something I might have to look into. And, um, yeah, so um, I'll probably end up just getting a different case or very similar case that uses the these whole four holes on the Raspberry Pi for it to mount it up. So, anyway, yeah, that's definitely something in my um, my books basically i'm probably gonna i'm actually gonna order a case like uh, right after i make this video actually because um i just don't love the fact that it can get really hot <laughs> and uh anyway um as anyway as far as the unit itself it uh, the pictures and quality is not bad i mean it uh um it is somewhat somewhat HD and um, video looks good. I mean, uh, I can't really complain that much because uh, I, I realize it's not like, uh, especially audio, it's not going to sound amazing or anything. But at least it has audio and I think that's kind of cool. So uh, anyway, once you uh, mount everything correctly, uh, so basically you'll need power uh, to... Um, to your Raspberry Pi 4 and um, HDMI, a micro HDMI to HDMI out. Uh, everything should work automatically if you plug in the, the uh, adapter, the power adapter. And um, yeah, so it's booting up um, the uh, RetroPie right now. And um, there we go. It looks uh, fine. Now there is a, a slight uh, light bleed through from on the very bottom of the screen. Um, it is uh, not noticeable uh, if you're just casually looking at it, but but if you boot up your um, machine for the first time, you'll especially on a black screen, you'll notice kind of light bleed through from the bottom. Uh, so that's something that I think is um, you see that a lot in cheap L LED displays. And I know I have a cheap TV that actually has that on the corner of the the screen, and it's just something that you know you I guess you get what you pay for, which is so. Um, but anyway, so we'll be um, trying out some uh, some games uh, using my Hori uh, Fight and Stick Mini. Um, so yeah. It's pretty smooth. Everything looks uh, good, and uh, there's no like video terror or anything like that. Uh, uh, it, the refresh rate seems pretty reliable. Now, um, I did dig, dig a little into uh, more into it, and you can adjust like uh, sharpness and color, and brightness. That all that kind of stuff that's standard in most uh, monitors. Um, so yeah, this uh, the display for for its size. I think is very good okay um so um i think personally speaking i think it's perfect for like retro game where uh you you don't have um most games or most older games running at a lower resolution it's gonna look fantastic on the screen uh as far as uh movies uh i have played um everything from a 4k file to a SD standard um, video and um, uh, it does um, the Raspberry Pi 4 does struggle a bit with the 4k uh, but uh, for any standard um, 1080p video it looks pretty good and especially on this tiny little screen it's not bad I mean uh, um, I hardly notice any um, any pixels or anything like that I mean 
I don't, I don't notice any dead pixels as far as that's more of a concern for, for a lot of people. But yeah, so we, we'll try out um, uh, 1944. Um, this is the, the Loop Master, I think it's the, uh, the title. And um, what else? Um, yeah, I actually, this is more is a more review of the, the joystick because I actually love playing shooting games, shooter games on uh, with my joystick because I think this is probably the, the best way of playing uh, these kind of shooters. Uh, uh, if you use a D-pad, uh, it will you end up hurting your thumb in the long run because. Uh, but uh, on a joystick, uh, you're not gonna have that problem. And I feel like I can move much better uh, as far as um, more control or better control. Um, but that's just my, um, you know. I mean, some people are actually pretty amazing at the D-pad. So, um, but as far as um, just just uh, uh, controlling joystick f for um, for f uh, shooters or, or I, you know, this joystick's actually made for um, fighting games. But um, uh, I find that uh, I'm not very good at, at Street Fighter. So I love I love the game, but. All right, so we have here um, Street Fighter. We're gonna just test out my fireballs and everything, and it's it's not bad um, uh, on the Retro Pi. I mean, uh, the um, this fighting stick is actually designed for Nintendo Switch, but you can use it on a PC or a Raspberry Pi. For and um, you know, some people don't love the size of it, and um, um, I think it's fine. I think you. As far as a portable stick, it's better than, say, a D-pad or um, um, a, a regular game controller or um, retro game controller. So, 